Hey, peace world. What's good? What's good? Uh, thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. My name is Wood. Uh, please hit that subscribe button or, uh, you know, hit the like button if you uh, dig the way that any information is presented or discussed. Um, man, we're week two in the COVID-19 season. I don't make any uh, light of that. Many of us are, uh, you know, all of us, uh, you know, all of the lockdowns and shut in and whatever you want to call it across the country. You know, we're all kind of scrambling to uh, just living, actually not scrambling to live, but just uh, dealing with the adjustments. So anyway, you know, the boxing world and, and the sports world is uh, still on hold. So it gave me a chance to uh, check out this self-made movie or uh, limited series on uh, Netflix over the weekend, um, starring Octavia Spencer, um, Tiffany Haddish, Carmen Ajogo, Kevin Carroll, Blair Underwood, and um, Garrett Morse. And... You know, to, to give you, I mean, the short and simple is um, I, out of five stars, if I was if I was grading it, I'd probably give it three and a half. If I was a, a scale of one to ten, probably a seven and a half or something. Um, you know, typically I'm not a big fan of these types of movies, you know, these period pieces. Uh, just the, the feel good nature to some of them or, you know. It's difficult stuff to, to, to make, to put together right. But um, all in all, man, it does have its shortcomings, but uh, I think it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, salute to uh, Maverick Carter and, and, and uh, LeBron James. Uh, getting involved with the production as, or coming into this project as producers. I thought that was extremely dope to see them involved with something, uh, you know, meaningful. And um, actually, the title was Self-Made Inspired by the Life of Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, I think one thing that I wanted to know immediately was like, was the uh, was the uh, antagonist, Addie Monroe, uh, played by Carmen Ajogo, was um, was she real or not? And uh, she wasn't. She's actually uh, Annie Malone is the is the name of the lady who was also in hair care and really had a fairly successful career or an enterprise herself. I, and honestly, I was reading an article on it, and she may have actually made it, she may have beat, uh, beaten uh, C, Madam C.J. Walker to, uh, to, to, to surpassing, you know, a million dollars. But she ran into some issues and troubles on her own. Um, and and, and uh, Madam C.J. Walker actually... You know, is in the Guinness Book, I think, as being a, America's first uh, multimillionaire or whatever. So, um, and they did have some, Annie Malone and, and, and uh, Madam C.J. Walker did have a relationship. C.J. Walker worked under her for a while before, uh, you know, staking out on her own. But um, that's that. So that's who uh, Addie Monroe was. Um, you know, performance wise, I thought Octavia Spencer did a did a fairly good job. Uh I just think, you know, it's it's four episodes. All of the episodes are probably fifty minutes to, to sixty minutes long. Um I'm not gonna say it was perfect because I felt like um you really didn't get a you didn't get a sense of what she did wealth wise because they were they spent a lot of time showing how she got the ball rolling how she got some investors uh you know how she started her first factory but then it, it, it didn't really show the only sense that you got of what she was doing financially was the fact that she had these these estates that she lived in and that she uh they made it known that you know she was the first black person to move in to the neighborhood by uh rockefeller john d rockefeller and um, when she moved to New York, following the separation from um, from Blair Underwood as her husband, 
whose name was C.J. Walker, um, you know, that's kind of the, the sense that you got of, uh, of, of how much, you know, wealth she did amass. Other than that, you know, the one thing that I had, one thing that, that stood out to me, and I don't know how true that was portrayed, was the fact that, um, <clears throat> you know, how she moved from being uh, in laundry, just doing a, providing a laundry service when you first meet her in this in this story, uh, how she gradually picks up being more of a, a businesswoman, especially when talking about the details of her, uh, of, you know, being efficient. I think that in one part, once once she had the factory going, they mentioned that she was starting to uh, her, her factory was set up like uh, Henry Ford's assembly plant, and she talked about efficiencies and 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 the costs and quality and things like that. So how did she get from you know just washing uh, clothes to coming up with the ingredients for the hair care systems? And then to move into, uh, you know, running a factory, uh, <clears throat> attracting investors. And then as she gradually goes on, she she just starts using all these different business terms. And I'm not saying it's unbelievable. I'm just saying how we don't really know. And the book is out there. Uh, her daughter, great-great-granddaughter, Alilia Bundles, uh, I guess wrote a book on this. And, uh, or you know, about... CJ uh, Walker and so it is very easy to easily to go back and see kind of get a more personal view of what she who she was but um so I, but I thought that was dope you know and, and then from heading up the company to moving on to talking to her employees uh coaching up and training her uh her sales agents um <clears throat> you know looking at deals to get into uh chain stores and whatnot uh, and then, you know, to, like I said, to, to go out and move into other markets in the, across the Midwest and then come in to settle down in, um, in, in the New York, in New York and opening up a shop in, um, in Harlem. And so even though it was four episodes long, like I said, they don't take much time to really show her success. They show her struggles, you know, her and her, her, her relationship with her husband, her marriage fails because she was uh, so uh, dead set on maximizing, <clears throat> you know, her business and growing her business. And it became so much of her focus, um, you know, her daughter, her daughter uh, played by Tiffany Haddish, you know. She was she was not a plus to the movie. I, I'll just be honest. I mean, she did not. She doesn't have that type of range at this point. Um, and, and well, I won't even get into the age difference thing. But yeah, just she didn't really fit into this time period. Um, what can I say? That's just the truth. I thought uh, Blair Under. I believe Blair Underwood is a pro. You know, he did his thing. Played the kind of the. Uh, you know the, the typical husband that that uh, couldn't figure out or wasn't able to maintain his position in the relationship as she got into the business world, and it was her baby, so everything had to be her way, um, and, and he couldn't figure out a way to um, you know to stay as the leader of the household and she didn't want to, you know, she didn't respond too well to any of his ideas. And so he goes and gets into other things, uh, you know, as he's not getting the attention that he seeks. Um, other than that, man, uh, performance wise, like I said, it's uh, Bill Bellamy's character and the, the, deck, the guy that played her uh, kind of played the lawyer. I think he was a lawyer. He was a lawyer and was really her right hand man, uh, Ransom. He played, he had a good role. Kevin Carroll, I believe, is his name. He was in uh, Paid in Full, as well as uh, my man's dad on uh, on uh, Snowfall. So, um, all in all, like I said, I, I thought it was it was pretty good. Some of the the presentation with it, it opens up with. 
Addie Monroe and uh, C.J. Walker in a boxing ring and in 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 robes and everything, showing them as rivals and going head to head. I didn't really care for those type of cut cuts that they were doing. Um, and then there was some other like uh, this this uh, this Walker girl uh, ad campaign thing that that C.J. Walker uh, Blair Underwood created with this young woman, this young black woman that he wanted to use as the, uh, the, as the, for the sales, ad, the ads and whatnot. She was riding around on a bike. And, uh, that was one of the things that came up was, um, Octavia Spencer, or Madam CJ Walker, you know, wasn't as attractive, wasn't viewed as being as attractive. She was heavy set or heavier set. Um, and it's just this colorism thing that's been going on for decades. And she was kind of, you know, fighting that personally. Uh, Addie Monroe had made some things, some comments about her earlier, you know, at the outset of the movie. Because Addie Monroe was, uh, she was the product of a slave owner who had raped one of his slaves. So the kid was, you know, biracial and had, uh, you know, longer hair, straighter hair and whatnot. And Addie Monroe kind of benefited from that. But, um, yeah, like I would suggest checking it out, man. I also really don't care for, you know, hip hop music and modern music to be featured in these older school, this 1900, we're talking 1920s. I really don't care to have uh hip hop weaved into it. No pun intended. Um So that's another kind of turn off for me. And then if you get too tricky with the flashbacks and making ghosts of characters and I don't, I don't really like how they mesh all that together personally uh but other than that man i thought you know the the uh the costumes or the the dress was fitting i thought where they shot it at uh you know the the the, the uh the outdoor areas that they use in for new york and new york city uh harlem and all of that i thought all of that looked pretty well the, the house that she owned Next to Rockefeller, where they set that up. I thought all of that was done pretty well. Again, for the most part, man, I think it was pretty cool. But um, there were some shortcomings um, in the project. Just because they chose to, what they, you know, just because of the, the, the parts of her lives, her life that they chose to focus on. And, um, you know, supposedly her daughter, Lelia, uh, was married. At the beginning, and her husband followed them from uh, St. Louis to uh, Indianapolis, is where they had originally set up. Um, and but her daughter was being, uh, you know, Tiffany Haddish was being pursued by this other young lady who was a photographer, and they kind of had this little lesbian romance thing going on. Uh, from what I'm reading, it doesn't sound like that wasn't totally the case. Uh, so that's that. But um, what else? There was one other thing I thought I wanted to mention before I get on out of here. So, I, you know, you can check out. Um, there was an interesting article on IndieWire.com. Just kind of a review of it. They weren't too uh, pleased with it. It was reviewed by Tambay Obinson. And then um, also read about the Annie Malone. Um, that was on a site called Town and Country, mag.com. An article by Chloe uh, Fusienis. Uh, so you can check those out if you want to read a little bit more about the actual characters. But like I said, man, I, it wasn't a hateful job. Um you know, they went with the, the, the in the direction that they thought was going to make this work. And, uh, you know, it just it, it is what it is. But definitely check it out. Um, I thought I could get the directors and writers. But it was directed by Demaine Davis and Casey Lemons. I think they did two episodes apiece. Uh, the writers were uh, Nicole Jefferson Asher. The aforementioned Lilia Bundles, the great great granddaughter, L. Johnson, uh, Janine Sherman, Barrios, Bar Barra, 
and Tiger Williams. So uh, that's that, man. Like I said, check it out. Um, let me know what you thought. If you want to leave a comment, holler at me. Uh, definitely uh, will try to respond to anybody, and and um, you know we'll see uh, we'll see what what goes on next. You know, I, I told Octavia Spencer has done pretty well the last couple of years. You know, not being uh, kind of a sex symbol type actress, and maybe and more so just focus on her acting abilities, and uh, you know her range, the different range of characters that she can play. Uh, you saw Ma. I, I haven't watched that one yet, but that was a different, a different uh, role for her. But um, and and like I said, it, it, let me know what you think, man. Like I said, I give it about three and a half. Seven and a half out of ten. You know, three and a half out of five. Somewhere around that. Uh, let me get on off of here, man. Continue to be safe and be healthy. Um, and, uh, you know, how I end it all the time. Uh, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great.